Well, good morning, everyone. We're going to ask everyone to come on in and find a good place to sit this morning, a comfortable place. Welcome to everyone. And happy Mother's Day today to all of our ladies. And we are grateful to have this opportunity to celebrate you and the influence that you have shared with so many of us. And we are grateful for that. <clears throat> As we gather in the name of the Lord today, <clears throat> we want to say thank you for responding to his invitation to be here with us and to be a part of what he has in store for us as we gather in his name this morning. As we prepare for worship, hear these words from uh, the writer of Proverbs as he speaks to us about how we are to honor and how we are to remember the women in our lives that play such a vital role in who we are. From Proverbs 31, strength and honor are her clothing, and she can laugh at the time to come. Her mouth speaks wisdom and loving instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the activities of her household and is never idle. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. Many women have done noble deeds, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting. Give her the reward of her labor, and let her works praise her at the city gates. We give God all of the glory for those who have left an imprint on our lives as we come today and as we celebrate God's gift to us. And we are grateful for that. Would you take just a moment, be still before the Lord, and ask the Lord to minister to you as you minister to him in your love and in your worship of him today. And then I will continue with our prayer for this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, another day that is your gift to us. We pray that as we have gathered here in your name, that we will offer this day back to you as our gift of thanks and gratitude as we walk in the path that Jesus has left before us. We thank you, Father, for his humble example of obedience and his continued faithfulness toward us. We pray that we will be people of humble obedience and faithfulness as well. Lord, allow us to fellowship together today and to rejoice with your gifts, the many gifts that you provide us each and every day of our lives. Remind us this morning, Father, that we have an opportunity and the privilege to love one another and to share with the world your great love for them. We thank you for these who have gathered today. We pray for our nation this morning. We ask, Father, that you would minister to those who are going through times of trial in their life. And we ask, Lord, that we would be sensitive to their needs and that we will be an extension of your amazing grace, your comfort, and your compassion. Lead us now as we offer ourselves to you in worship. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, Brother Chris is going to come, and we thank Chris for stepping in today as Rodney's away and the praise team. And we're going to stand together, and we're going to sing Standing on the Promises. So you join us in worship now. Amen. Yeah, let's all stand as we worship together on this beautiful Mother's Day. It's going to be raining in a few minutes, so hope, hopefully if you brought a convertible, you have your top up. But we are in a beautiful dry place, a safe place. I hope it's safe in more than one way to you this morning as you worship. I want you to feel free to worship. Standing on the promises, let's sing a couple of uh, verses, and then we're going to greet one another after these first two verses. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout. God, sing it, standing, standing, standing. 
knees, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I am standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises that cannot fail, when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Say hi to your neighbor this morning. Wish him a Mother's Day if that's the right greeting. can be seated as we come to our special music this morning. Sister Penny Starr and Susan Beadle are going to sing our special welcome in and we hope you get uh, what you need out of the service today in terms of being lifted up. But more importantly, we tend to be lifted up when we lift up the name of Jesus. So we'll continue to do that this morning. Ladies.
Thank you, Susan and Penny. Let's all stand as we continue in worship this morning. We're going to sing more about Jesus, hymn number 600. We're going to sing all four verses this morning.
Amen. Remain standing as we all sing Jesus Messiah. Y'all can be seated as Brother Chuck comes to share the word with us this morning. We are glad that you're here, and uh, I want you to take 
notice of this uh, slideshow that is from our Mother's Day luncheon that took place just a couple of weeks ago. So enjoy this as it plays. Well, we know why God made mamas, don't we? Because we needed them, and we need them, and we're grateful for the time that God allows us to have them. And I pray that uh, if your mother is no longer here, uh, that you are able uh, to know that there is coming a day when you will be reunited with her, never to be separated again, and we can celebrate that and be grateful for that. I want to take just a moment and uh, ask all of our ladies that are here uh, just simply to stand for a moment. We want to recognize you for the contribution that you make to us each and every day of our lives, and we want to say thank you for that. So would all of the ladies stand today? If you're here, please stand. We want to say thank you this morning for your gift to us. And uh, if you would just remain standing for just a moment. We have several ladies, several mothers here, and so uh, thank you for your contribution and for all that you do for us as you encourage, love, support uh, your children and allow us the opportunity to encourage and 
seek to nurture you in the faith that God has given and planted in each of us. And we pray that you will be blessed in that. So would you just remain standing? I want to say a word of prayer over the ladies this morning. Heavenly Father, for the many blessings that you bestow upon us, we are grateful. And today, if we are honest with ourselves and honest with you, we would say that the greatest gift here on earth, beyond your son Jesus, is the gift of motherhood and the mothers that have loved and cared for us, have mended us, have set us on the right path, who have reminded us that there is one in heaven that loves even more than she loves us. We thank you for the prayers that these women have prayed to you over their children, those entrusted to them from your hand. We pray, Father, that in the days to come, that they will continue to know that you are providing for them and that you are protecting them, that you have surrounded them with your great love. And I pray, Father, that we would never lose sight of how important their contribution is to us as a church, to us as a nation, to a world, and Father, for your kingdom. And I pray that we will come alongside and minister to them and honor them as you have honored us with your wonderful gift to us. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Would you thank these ladies this morning? for their contributions to us. And ladies, I want to say that before we leave today, or as we are leaving today, uh, some of the men will have a rose for you to take with you, just as a symbol of our gratitude and our thanks this morning for you being here and for the contribution and contributions that you make daily into our lives. So thank you so much for being here and being a part of our time together this morning. If you will, find with me Ephesians chapter 3, and we will begin at verse 20, two verses today. Chapter 3 of Ephesians, verse 20 and 21. Hear the word of the Lord today. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, According to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. May God add his richest blessing to the reading of his word. One writer, James Faust, has said, the influence of a mother in the lives of her children is beyond calculation. There's no way for us to know how much the influence and the input into our lives that our mothers have given us continue to encourage and also to shape us. Another has said, a mother is she who can take the place of all others, but whose place no one else can take. I would agree with that. George Washington said, my mother was the most beautiful woman I ever saw. All that I am, I owe to my mother. I attribute my success in life to the moral, intellectual, and physical education I receive from her. I don't know about him, but I received some physical education too. It was at the end of a switch, and that was a, a good learning education for me. Abraham Lincoln said, All that I am or hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. Princess Diane said, a mother's arms are more comforting than anyone else's. I think that is true. Some of you may remember a, a comedian named Phyllis Diller. This is what she said, I want my children to have all the things I could not afford. Then I want to move in with them. <laughs> That's kind of the way we want to see that happening, isn't it? Some of you will remember Tammy Faye, or excuse me, uh, Tina Faye. You remember Tammy Faye too, don't you? But uh, Tina Faye from Saturday Night Live, she said, being a mom has made me so tired and so happy. <laughs> 
And an unknown writer, he was afraid to put his name on it, said, sooner or later, we all quote our mothers. Now, I have to say that that is true. I believe that is true because here's what I did. I made a promise to myself that I would never, ever say to my children the things that my mother said to me. And I kept that promise until I found out they work pretty good. A couple of those were because I said so. I promised I would never say that to my kids, but I have found myself more than once saying because I said so to my kids. My mother also had a favorite saving, especially when we had a, a favorite saving, a saying that we repeated, and it was this, because everyone else is doing it, why not? My mother would always say, if everyone was jumping off the Skyway Bridge, I wouldn't expect you to do that. The Skyway Bridge, if you've never seen it, is a long bridge, high bridge over the Tampa Bay, leading into the Gulf of Mexico, close to my hometown. My wife doesn't like me driving over it, much less stopping and thinking of jumping off of it. <laughs> Motherhood. It's a challenge. Motherhood has always been a challenge. If you read in the scripture, you see examples of those who have given themselves to the task of standing strong for their children. Standing in the gap, if you will. Holding on to the hope and the dream that only a mother can have for her children. But a dream that has been placed in her heart by a faith that God has given to her. A faith that as he has entrusted that child to her, that he will make her path to go in such a way that she will recognize his hand molding and making her into that which is necessary as she guides her children along the way. It is the faith that leads her to believe in the one who entrusted her with a child. Believing that he is able to do all things more than we could ever imagine because of the power of Christ at work in us. It's a mother's faith. Have you ever heard your mother praying for you? Many have said that it was the prayers of my mother that saw me through. I can stand before you today and to admit to you that it was not so much the prayers of my mother, but it was the prayers of her mother that ultimately led, and I am convinced of this, to me leaving the study of law and coming into and being called into the ministry to follow Jesus and to be a preacher. I didn't know it until many years after the fact that I had been serving in ministry that my mother would confess to me that probably the reason that I am in the ministry is because her mother prayed for all of her life that one of her children would be in the ministry. You cannot discount the prayers and the faith of a mother and the impact of a mother upon her children and the succeeding generations that come. It's holding on to the fact that you know in your heart that God is able to fill in the gaps where you might be missing a little information or direction for your life. As we think about the words of this passage, as John was, or as Paul was inspired to write these words, he shares with us some truths that are maybe a little difficult for us to always embrace, but it reminds us of the fact that when we cannot, God is able to do all things. And he's able to do, and beyond being able, he longs to do for you and for me the things that we cannot even imagine the things that God would have us to do and the places that God would have us to go. Listen, I'm here to tell you that the last thing I ever wanted to spend my life doing was standing up in front of people and talking. That was not who I was. 
And it is only by the grace of God and the ability that he has to transform and to encourage us in the calling that he's given to us. I don't know what your calling is, but what I do know is that he is able, he is exceedingly and abundantly more able to accomplish in and through you that which you never, ever thought possible. And sometimes as mothers... Motherhood has always been a tremendous challenge. But in this day in which we live, where mothers are required to be all things to all people and to do all things and to be involved in everything and everywhere all at the same time, it's so much more difficult than in the days gone by. Mothers who are responsible for not only keeping a home and providing the needs of their children, but also working outside of the home and taking care of all the things inside of the home. Trying to keep her children happy and trying to keep her husband happy and trying to do the things that she believes will make life easier for all of them. It's a great challenge. How many of us stop and pray just in a moment? for our mothers. There are so many things in this life that we take for granted and I think maybe at the top of the list is our mothers who provide so many things for us. Now some of you in this room are teenagers and here's what I know about teenagers. You think your mother needs to learn a little more than she knows. I'm telling you in a few years you'll realize that she learned an awful lot in a very short time. And it's not that she's learned anything new, it's that you've learned something new. Mama knows a lot more than you think she does. And Mama loves you a lot more than you think she does. And just because Mama says no doesn't mean that she doesn't love you. There's a reason for Mama saying no at times. And the scripture teaches us how important it is for us to recognize the instruction of our mother over us, especially in those formative years. It's hard to know the full measure of the impact of children growing up outside of the full-time nurture of their mothers. But we need to pray that mothers will continue to be able to fill in the gaps with the time that they have, that they will have the stamina to be able to stand on their faith, believing that where they could not and cannot, God can and God will. Administer to them and share with them and encourage them as, they, as he surrounds them with his love and grace and his power to move forward in their lives. And one of the great challenges for mothers is the fact that they live, especially with that first child, knowing that Things are different now. Things are very different. It's the fear uh, in the heart of a new mother. You know, all of the excitement and the blessed moment has come and it has gone. And now there is that package of love and that bundle of love that has come from heaven. And you're asking yourself, Mom, where is the instruction book? Where's the manual? Right? And the thing that I know about this is what you do is you, you find yourself saying, I'm going to do everything in my power to keep this baby safe. You bring that baby in, the crib is next to your bed, and every motion that she makes, every sound that she makes, even in the middle of the night, you're standing straight up, looking in, making sure that everything is fine. That baby drops that pacifier on the floor, you scoop it up, you're in there sanitizing that thing, making sure that it's clean, there's not a germ on it, before you ever get it close to their mouth again. The second child comes, that poor boy, he's in the bedroom down the hall, you don't hear any sound that he's making until he's large enough and grown enough to throw his toys out of the crib against the wall. And when he drops that pacifier on the floor, you simply pick it up, wipe it on your sleeve, and you put it back in his mouth and you say, everybody needs a little dirt. <laughs> right? Things change. It's a challenge. And let me just tell you, if you're third or fourth down the line, 
good luck, dude. <laughs> Life is really different at that point. Motherhood. Learning to love and to care and to adjust. It's really the challenge of a mother's faith. And what Paul says to us and what he wants us to hold on to is that whether we're mothers or we're followers of Christ, we have the power within us, the presence of God within us to empower us to be able to accomplish all things that are in his purpose and are a part of his good will. Paul would write in Philippians that it is God who is at work in us now to will and to perform, to work his good will in our lives day in and day out. It is God who is at work in us. And we can be thankful today that God is at work in the lives of our mothers, caring for us and ministering to us. Now, I, I don't know how it was at your home, but I, I found out early on, and I, I was the firstborn, but it's difficult being the firstborn. I'm just here to tell you. They make all their mistakes on us, right? And um, sometimes what that means is that to correct the mistakes, they have more switches to employ. And to spare the rod is to spoil the child. And my, if my mother might not have known any verse other than that one in the scripture, but she used it well. We were not mistreated, but we were taught how to be responsible in the way we lived. If there's one challenge for us today in our culture, I think it is the challenge that there are too many voices speaking into the lives of parents, mothers and fathers, as to how to discipline and how to raise their children. There is no greater guidebook, there is no greater instruction book than the one that is sitting here on the table this morning, and that's the Holy Word of God. And I'm saying to all of us this morning that if we will hold on to the truth that Paul shares with us in, the, in this passage, that God is able to do all things exceedingly abundantly more than we could ever imagine, if we will trust him, he will teach us how to love our children in a kind, compassionate, tough way. To instill in our children the fact that we are to honor our parents, we are to listen to them, and if you don't think they're worthy of being listened to, then you need to pray for them, believing that God will straighten that out because God's command is that we will honor our mothers and fathers it is the first of the commands with a promise and if we fail to do that we can be assured and you can be assured that your days will be filled with trouble and challenges because that's exactly what God says if you want to live long and blessed, honor your mother and your father according to the teaching of the scripture. And mothers and fathers, you have a responsibility to make certain that you are living according to the faith that God has placed in you, guiding and directing you in such a way that your children see they don't just hear, they see your faith, your worship in action. In the way that you love and care for yourself, your home, and for your children. It's one thing for us to stand and to shake our finger at them giving instructions. It's another thing for us to come alongside and to join their hands and to lovingly guide them 
in the admonition and in the teaching of God's holy word. There are going to be times when we have to correct them. There will be times when we need to rebuke them. There will be other times when we will need to come alongside them and simply lift them up and uphold them as the Lord God upholds us in his righteous right arm to care for them and to minister to them and to let them know that there is a lesson to be learned in every mistake. I saw a guy wearing a t-shirt this week and it struck me funny. This is what the t-shirt said. Bad decisions lead to good stories. Think about that for a moment. Bad decisions lead to good stories. Here's what I know. Every bad decision that you or I can make can lead to a good story if it is being immersed in the loving kindness and mercy of Almighty God. And there's no one better to turn bad decisions into good stories than a kind, compassionate, loving mother to come alongside, not to condemn, neither to condone, but to simply love us through the rough patch good stories. Is there a good story in you? Is there a good story to be told in your life? Have you become the product? Are you becoming the product of your mother's motivation to lead and to love you as she allows Christ to work in her through her life and in her life? This is what Paul wants us to hold on to, that as we recognize that God is able to do things that we could never imagine or even think about Him doing, it's all the result of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ at work in you, motivating you to recognize that the focus of your life is not determining whether your child will be a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher or a preacher but determining that your child, to the best of your ability, will learn how to walk with Christ and to love Him and to honor Him. The most significant accomplishment that you as a mother will ever have in your life is to know that the children that were entrusted to you have found faith in Christ and are living according to that faith, to His honor and His glory and to your just reward. The greatest accomplishment, the most significant accomplishment in a parent's life, in a mother's life, is to know that you have raised your child in the way they should go. And even though they might turn from it, they will return because they have seen it lived out before them. I'm not talking about a talking faith. I'm talking about a living faith that is alive and well and seen in our actions. One of the things that we have to be aware of is that as we grow up, we will all quote our mothers and we will all quote our fathers at some points. And there are some quotes that are not worth repeating. And some of the conversations that take place in front of our children at the dinner table, you still do eat at the dinner table, don't you? I'm not sure everyone does anymore. But sometimes we need to guard the conversation that's going on. We need to allow the motivation in our life that Christ is at work in us instead of talking about the neighbor down the street in such a terrible way, we speak of them in terms of knowing that while their life might not be all that we would like it to be, we will trust that God will begin to work in their lives because we're asking Him to do that. Instead of us talking about our children's friends in such a negative manner, 
Let's encourage our children to understand that there are things that we're concerned about, but let's teach them also that we're going to pray for their friends so that they might have an opportunity to influence their friends into following them to Christ rather than them following their friend to the world. There's a difference. It's a mother's motivation that comes as a result of Christ at work in her. Living, loving, longing to honor the Lord Jesus in all that she does. And then finally, a mother's praise. A mother's praise. When's the last time your children heard you praying for them? When's the last time your children saw you open God's word and worship him in a time of just asking God to encourage you, to strengthen you, to honor you in his calling as a mother. How important is it for us to lead by example? This is exactly the message that Paul is leaving for us in this prayer. It's a prayer for us to understand that if we do not live out our faith, if we do not allow the ongoing motivation that resides within us, which is the Holy Spirit, to be seen, they will not know how to praise the Lord. They will not know how to honor the Lord, to revere Him, to even fear Him in a holy fear. When's the last time we've simply stopped and said, let's pray? When's the last time we stopped and said, it's time for us to acknowledge our need for the Lord? Those are all examples of leading our children into worship. And what Paul says to us in this passage is so vitally important for us to recognize as he closes it out and he says, To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations. What I'm concerned about is, not so, as, much, as much as I'm concerned about what's happening in our culture and in our nation, what I'm really concerned about is what's not happening in our churches. And what we know right now is, with each succeeding generation, participation in worship and in church is declining. And the great concern for all of us as our world is ever changing, our great concern should be for the generations that are coming. And we need to be prepared to give our best for the generation that is coming up right now. If ever there was a moment in church history when we needed to stand on the solid rock, it's right now. It's right now. It's now that we need to be people who are finding ourselves committed to allowing the children and the generations that are coming up to hear us sing and to hear us live these words. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock, I'll stand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. In Christ, on Christ the solid rock, I stand. Are we standing on Christ the solid rock? When the challenges come, when no one seems to be listening, when no one seems to care, where do you go? The song says, I go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation, the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. Are we standing by the fortress or are we standing in the fortress, trusting that God is going to allow us to see him turn this thing around 
so that the generations that are coming up, those that Bradley is working with, they are going to be strengthened. They are going to be challenged. They are going to learn to love Jesus Christ and to know that their anchor will always hold as they place their faith in him. It's a challenge to be a mother. It's a challenge to be a father. It's a challenge to be the church. But to him, who is exceedingly and abundantly able to do more than all we could ever imagine, as Christ works in us, to him be all the glory as we pass it on from the, to the next generation. Friends, don't give up. Let's not give up on the generation that's coming. Let's invest all that we have. Let's take a little moment from me, 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 and look at them, them, them. Trusting that God will use us to instill in them a faith that is real and that is solid and that will stand for all of eternity. And it begins with mothers. I'm convinced of that. But I'm also convinced of this. As one man said, the most important thing a father can do for his children is to love their mother. To love their mother. And that means that you will stand with her, alongside her. You'll hold her up as she continues to live out her faith in Christ, as Christ motivates her to love and to care for her children to Christ, so that her life will be a continuing testimony of praise for all generations to see. Amen? Heavenly Father, we thank you for these moments together today. And we, once again, we thank you for the women that continue to encourage and to instruct in our lives. And now, Father, we pray that you will help us to hold on to the truths that there is more to this life than just simply having a position, reaching a place. It's having a purpose that we know is from heaven. And I pray that each person that is gathered here this morning will acknowledge that you have a purpose for them and you have a promise that you will never leave nor forsake them in that purpose and that they will remain faith, uh, they will remain strong in their faith so that you might use them to bring honor and glory to your holy name. Lord, lead us to do things that we could never imagine, not so that people will recognize us, but so people will see your amazing grace at work. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we stand this morning, this is your moment, a moment of invitation, a moment to say yes to the Lord and to his place, his purpose for you. For the first time, that may be for you today to come to Christ and to say, I need to trust him, to follow him. I need to call upon his name that my sin might be forgiven and that I might be sealed to the promise of life that is new and abundant and everlasting as I trust in Christ. Maybe today it's for you to come and to unite with this fellowship and to say, this is where the Lord would have me to worship and to honor him with my service of praise. As we stand together as Brother Chris leads us, is there one who will come and say, wherever he leads, I will go. You come, I'll be here at the front to meet with you this morning. Take up thy cross and follow me. I heard my master say, I gave my life to ransom thee. Surrender your all today. Wherever he I'll go wherever he leads I'll go 
drew me closer to his side I sought his will to know and in that will I now abide wherever he leads I'll go wherever he leads I'll go Would you be seated for another moment or two? Uh, we have some announcements to make. I do want to remind all of the ladies that as you depart today, the men will be uh, allowing you to select one of the roses there uh, for you to take with you. Just a small token of our appreciation for who you are and all the things that you do uh, to honor the Lord in your life. God bless you and thank you for sharing this time with us today. Good morning. Hey, it's a pleasure to see you guys in God's house this morning. Uh, we have several announcements, so I'm not going to go over all of them. But just as a reminder, there are the upcoming events and news section in the bulletin. Uh, so if you have a bulletin, just put that somewhere you can see it throughout the week. Maybe mark those dates on your calendar. A lot of cool and, and important events coming up here for the church. Uh, one thing not in the bulletin, but it's coming up Saturday, is the men's breakfast uh, for Legardo Baptist. So any men uh, that would like to participate, you can also bring friends and guests and family. Uh, it's going to be Saturday morning, 7 a.m. at the Cracker Barrel here in Gallatin. Okay, so 7 a.m. at the Cracker Barrel here in Gallatin. Again, there's no you know, set number of people that have to come. Uh, there's three, if there's 20, we'll still have a good time. So 7 a.m., Saturday morning at Cracker Barrel here in Gallatin. We'd love for you to invite some friends, invite some family. It's just a time, there's really no agenda, it's just a time for us men to get together outside of church, just to uh, support one another, hang out, have a good time, uh, and just enjoy breakfast together. Um, also, next week, May 21st, we're having our cake auction for our youth, and so I'm going to set that up on Wednesday after the service, so as you come in next Sunday, um, those that are bringing a dish in, you'll see your form is laid out with your name on it. Put your dish right there. As, a, as um, you come in for Sunday morning, if you would like to participate in the auction, each little item will have an auction sheet right below it uh, with the highest bid that's currently on there. If you want to do higher than that, just put your name and your, your bid. At the end of the service, we'll give about 20 minutes for everybody to file out. And then those that, are, that would like to remain for the Concluding at the auction, I'll go over the highest bid for each item. If anybody like, would like to bid higher, we'll have an opportunity for that. And then we'll, we'll take payment, give you your items, and all of that money will go toward the youth going on camp here June 7th through 10th. Uh, in addition to that, our, our shirts came in uh, for um, the NHL draft uh, mission night. We'll also use those uh, as the years come for different outreach events with Predators games and things like that. Um, we have several extra shirts uh, that we purchased. Uh, actually, we didn't have to purchase them. We got them for free this year. Uh, we have several extra shirts, though. So next week with the cake auction, I'll also lay out the shirts as well. If you would like to have a shirt, uh, you can feel free to take one. Again, they didn't cost us anything, so we're not charging anything for them. But if you would like to give a donation, whether it's $5, $10, whatever, all that money as well will go toward the youth going to camp June 7 through 10. So next week, a big fundraiser for the youth event going to trip here, uh, going to the camp June 7 through 10. Uh, if you don't know about the camp that we're going to, uh, we're going to uh, Kentucky this year. Uh, we're going to go to the Ark Museum. We're going to go to the Creation Museum. We're going to have a time of just a spiritual retreat. Where we're staying at is pretty uh, secluded. Uh, we have a whole big property, a big farm. Uh, so that way we're not by a lot of distractions. We'll have time to have a little bonfire, outside activities, devotions with our own group. And then during the day, we'll do the Ark Museum, the Creation Museum, and some other fun activities. So it'll be a very good trip, very educational for our youth. Uh, in addition to that, um, this week, uh, probably by the end of this week, so I'm thinking next Sunday, uh, the orders for VBS t-shirts will need to be completed. So if you would like a VBS t-shirt, 
is ten dollars if you get a double x or triple x i think it's a little bit more uh, but the prices are on the sheet back there if you have not signed up to get a bbs t-shirt please do so by the end of next sunday because our ladies are going to try to order those then uh, okay so maybe before sunday okay perfect thank you joe allen thank you for that so before next sunday um other than that um just uh, one, last, one last thing here, or two last things. June 11th is Graduate Sunday. So for our graduates, if you could send me those photos, about five to seven photos from birth until graduation, um, please get those to me so I can go ahead and get the PowerPoint built. I'll give you some more information closer to time on some more details leading up to that day. And then uh, Compassionate Hands Ministry uh, is going strong. Uh, Ms. Linda's doing a great job, and TJ, with that. Uh, so if you would like to, again, be a part of that, please reach out to her and she'd be more than happy to get you uh, plugged in. Anybody else have anything this morning? All right. Well, it's great to see you guys in the Lord's house. Happy Mother's Day again to all the mothers. It is truly a blessing, each and every one of you, and to have you here this morning with us. Can our deacons come up for our morning offering? Brother Chuck, do you mind praying for us? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for the wonderful day to recognize the mothers. As, as without them, we just don't know where we would be. And uh, God, we just pray for their endurance and their strength and their courage to keep staying the course and let them never turn from you because sometimes they're our last defense within the family. And God, we just pray for all the children that uh, are part of, of these wonderful women and have them to truly seek their wisdom and their guidance. God, we ask that you take this offering and bless it. We just pray that the money that's taken up will be used in a way that would further the kingdom and would reach out into the community and bring those who are not your children into the fold, into the family that you have described. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Ms. Ginger. Let's all stand as we get ready to uh, depart together. Hope everyone has a wonderful Mother's Day honoring your mom. And just remember the Lord makes her who she is when she's at her best. And you as well. So let's sing, uh, Lord, prepare me. This is sanctuary. Let's sing it. Amen. 